very good afternoon to all of you who have joined us for the latest in this series of Beyond Modeling uh, webinars. Uh, or oh, good morning, should I say, to some of, some of you who are joining us for, from the US uh, for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, we're now ready to start. Uh, so without further ado, I will get straight on to the uh, first slide within our, um, uh, our series. Okay. As a start, if I introduce myself, uh, those of you who had attended previous uh, webinars will be familiar with my voice. Uh, but my name is Kevin Sheehy. Uh, I'm a senior consultant based here at the Lana Group uh, in our HQ in the UK, in the middle of England. Uh, I've been working with Lana for many years and carrying out simulation projects for in excess of 20 years now across um, a wide variety of different areas. Um, both geographically and uh, in, in different organizations such as manufacturing, energy, transportation, logistics, and also some of the less traditional areas uh, that simulation have been applied to over the years, health being one, uh, and the public sector being a, a, another area where simulation has been applied extensively over the last uh, few years. I've done a number of projects ranging from simple uh, models uh, to uh, sort of quite complex modeling exercises that go on over many months. Uh, so I've been where most of you guys are, uh, actually in the thick of it, um, building models uh, and so on. A bit of background to this webinar first before I launch in. Um, as I mentioned, it's one of our series of Beyond Modeling webinars that, uh, that we um, uh, have initiated over the last few months. This particular 30-minute webinar introduces some tools, techniques and approaches uh, to really promote the value of simulation within your organisation by increasing awareness of your capability and by also communicating the value of simulation throughout your business. We get a lot of questions from organizations or customers as I'm going around uh, visiting them and discussing what they're doing uh, about the whole idea of engagement, of getting the managers to listen and get more engaged in what you guys are doing. I often get told them we do something and the management don't really listen. Uh, so the theme sort of, of this webinar revolves very much around that side of things, sort of backed up as well by a recent survey um, that highlighted the need not only for modeling skills, but further skills to be able really to sort of uh, increase the value of simulation uh, to, to organizations such as your own. Uh, what we found was that those organizations that were sort of scored very highly in looking at sort of the management awareness of simulation around the organization, how they focused in on the customer and how they promoted their value and the value of simulation um, across their organization uh, really had a gr much greater influence uh, and were able to support key decision making across uh, their organization, across their business. Uh, we did a recent survey ourselves at, uh, at uh, an event that we carried out with our customers. Uh, and basically what we asked these um, attendees to do was to rate themselves or rate their organization in three different areas. Um, the three areas were management awareness of simulation within the organization, how focused they were on the customer uh, within their organization. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we're going through about the customer, who is the customer. Uh, and how focused are, are we on them? And the third area uh, that we, we sort of were, were, were sort of polling or asking our attendees was around about how they promoted value, um, how they promoted the value of their job, their role, and of simulation within their organization. So we posed questions around those three areas, and we asked people to rank themselves from being one, which is excellent, so everybody in the organization knows all about simulation. We're very focused on the customer and, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the, the one is, the, if I take it from the other end, one is basically no one knows anything about it. Up to four, everybody knows about it. So in each of those different areas, we asked our attendees to rank themselves. 
So on the promoting value, we had a range of scores from one, which well, we don't really, we keep our head down and we do our modeling and, and that's it, right up to the other extreme where we're encouraged to be proactive, lots of case studies and articles going internal press uh, and presentations around the organization. Uh, we did this really to try and get behind some of the, uh, the challenges that customers face within their organization. Uh, and what we found was quite, quite interesting. Firstly, if we look at the management awareness uh, and looking at those sort of one to four in, in reverse there, um, was, what was marked was that over two thirds of the people polled felt that their management weren't really that up, up with what was going on with simulation and how it could improve and influence decisions within their organization. So 50, 68%, just over two thirds. Um, of those who ranked themselves at the highest level was a very, very small percentage, 5%, uh, where they felt their senior management really were firm advocates of simulation. They recognized its value and they were prepared to use it uh, for um, major change in investment decisions. And I guess the utopia here is, and, I, and I've encountered it in some organizations that I've worked with, is that no major change will be implemented within the organization until it's first been simulated. And that's really right up there at the top level, but it was surprising how few uh, of, uh, of the people polled felt their organization fell into that category. The second question, uh, looking at customer focus, not surprisingly, this perhaps um, sort of ranked slightly better. Uh, over half were in the top two categories. Uh, people felt they knew who their customer was. Um, they had good contact on projects uh, and, you know, felt, you know, that they were very focused on what they were doing, which again was, was not unexpected, I guess, um, but, uh, you know, w w w was pretty good all the same. The third level was looking at how um, teams, how simulation users promote the value and the benefits of simulation within their organization. Again, this was spread much more evenly across the, uh, the, the platform. Still only, uh, still over 50% were in the bottom category, um, looking at really, they don't really do much. They do the project and they move on, as I mentioned. Um, but there were, you know, encouragingly quite a high level of, uh, of respondees who, who fell into the top category as well. So what this got us to think about, you know, with our theme of um, taking simulation beyond modeling, this very much got us to think about, you know, the different areas in which we can help. Uh, and th this series of webinars have very much focused uh, on these areas that came to light through some of these discussions with customers, some of the polls, some of the uh, uh, research that we'd done, all to try and promote the use of uh, simulation within the organization and hopefully help you guys sort of rise to some of the challenges that you face with getting simulate the, the best value out of simulation within your organization. So we started off back a couple of months ago looking more at the modeling side and in particular looked at experimentation, you know, to take it beyond just the simple building of model. We spent about a month ago, about four weeks ago, we talked a little bit more about pro project management. Um, this third webinar is much more looking at uh, how we manage, engage with our internal customers uh, and promote the value of simulation within uh, our organization. So that's what we're going to focus on uh, for the next 20, 25 minutes or so. Uh, within this webinar. What we're trying to do is introduce tools, techniques, approaches to help you address this, this challenge, if you like, uh, of managing your internal customers and promoting the value of simulation within the organization uh, and how you can work closely within your organization to increase the capability uh, uh, and also educating those new to simulation of its benefits and communicating the value of simulation through your business. The ultimate aim being to help you deliver more value through the projects you do, uh, to help you manage your internal customers and communicate with them better, uh, and potentially to discover more opportunities to add more value using simulation within the organizations, and, and also really to, to excite your 
their colleagues, your customers, and encourage them to spread the good news. So, so what I'm going to do is, over the next few minutes, I'm going to look at a number of approaches or techniques we've used with our customers uh, to, to, to get, across, get over you know, the, 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 this particular challenge. Um, the first three very much look at um, customers, and that's an interesting one. I, I, and I'll put up a few slides to provoke a little bit of thought in that area uh, in terms of, of what customers are. Uh, then that relates very much to the customer focus angle. The next topic then looking at management awareness is very much about getting awareness of what your capabilities are across the organizations. Uh, the third, um, the last but by no means least, uh, is all about how you can communicate the value of what you do throughout your organizations. So this is really looking at ways or techniques, approaches to maximize your value within your organization. So if I move on um, to the, the first of these and look at customers. Everyone works for customers. Now, that, that was something that got me thinking and I think, well, you know, I thought about whether this is appropriate at this level, um, but then I got to think, well, who are your customers? Whether you work within an organization, are you internal um, consultants within your organization? Do you work for other parts of the organization? Are you um, part of a consultancy organization when perhaps your customers are a little clearer? If you work internally, are your customers your management? Are the other colleagues within the, um, the organization? And just started to think about those sort of things and, uh, 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 within your organization. So if you think of your customers, we, we all work with them in one way or the other. Uh, and th the common goal really is to increase the value of what we do. So we want to do more work, we want to add more value to the work, we want to communicate uh, the value of this work. And also, as I mentioned before, discover opportunities to add more value. Uh, and it's all about working through this process, if you like, of awareness, understanding, um, through the consideration of projects, the project itself, and then delivering the value and leaving everybody pretty happy at the end of the day with what you've done. And it's all about selling the service, promoting the service, and creating a whole brand identity, if you like, around the use of simulation within your organization. Moving back to thinking about customers within our organization, um, and as I mentioned before, internal, external, we've all got customers, whether they be our colleagues or management, or whether they're, they're, they be uh, other organizations. And, you know, at the bottom end of the pyramid, it's all about identifying who they are, understanding what they want, delivering to it. And that's typically, you know, where we'll start, you know, in terms of, you know, a customer relationship. As your modeling team grows more competent, does more projects, what you'll be doing is looking to move up this pyramid uh, very much uh, and looking at um, you know, exceeding the needs, almost getting in there first before they even know they've got a, an issue that they can use modeling for, you being there to actually uh, uh, be, be play a key role in that. Um, all the way up to you know full customer commitment, which goes back to this idea of you know simulate before you make any substantial change to your processes within your organization. So have a little think, where are you guys within your organization? Are you very much starting out and reacting, or are you much more at the top end of this pyramid and working hand in hand with the key decision makers in your organization? Uh, and influencing the strategy and the decisions being made at the senior level. So when I talk about customers, you know, that, that, that's the area I'm very much thinking about. One, one area that I, I've, or one theme that I've returned to in a number of these uh, seminars, and it's something you'll hear myself and my colleagues talking about this, you may even have been subject to this in the past, is the customer um, review process. And following previous webinars, I've been asked by several people, well, okay, I can see, yeah, reviewing, reviewing what you've done is good, but how does it work? And how could we use it within our organization to help us? Uh, so what I thought I'd do in this uh, session was just talk a little bit about the process 
uh, and then get you guys thinking about, you know, well, do, could I do this? How can I do this within my organization, uh, you know, to, to, to increase the value of what I'm doing? Very simple process, really. It's all about arranging reviews, conducting the reviews, logging results. Uh, and the important aspect of the customer review process then comes, you know, from five onwards. It's what you do with what you find. The review process isn't an, an end in itself. It's a means to an end. So it's all about, OK, you've done a project. Uh, you've gone back to your customer, you know, a month, two months, six months later. Uh, you reviewed what you've done. What have you learned from that? And what we do is very much break our customer review process into a number of areas. Rarely do all of the areas uh, uh, are all of the areas sort of uh, appropriate to who we're talking to within an organization, but we'll find a usual mix and match. So we'll talk about you know the, the team that's carried out the review uh, or carry out the project. you know what did your custo end customer think of that? Were they the right skilled people? Did they understand? Um, were they professional, the commitment, all those sorts of things, right through to the solution itself. The value is a key area. You know, when you go back to a project later, and often, you know, as a model builder, you'll build a model and you'll, you may even pass it over, uh, but never really understand what the outcome, you know, later down the line was. You might make recommendations to add new machines, slimline a process, add buffer storage here and there, add extra resources to different part of the process. How often, you know, do you go back at a later date and work out, you know, well, okay, that was the recommendation. What happened in practice? And that's very much where the value comes out within the process. You know, was it good value when they implemented the changes? Do you know, did you know, did what you predict happen happen? Did it give the benefit? And was the overall process value for money? And so on. So the idea of any review is to, to work it into a number of different categories uh, and then come up with a scoring. You know, uh, what we tend to do is ask, you know, in three areas here, you know, how are we doing? Are we getting better or worse? How important is this part to you? And come up with a score, basically, uh, which gives an idea of you know how happy people are, uh, and as you go back for multiple projects within your organisation, you can get an idea of whether things are improving or, or or perish the thought getting worse. But what I said, it's all about actions, and this is the key part of the review process. It's all about finding out at the end of a project, you know, what could have gone better, what things can you do in future projects, and and often uh, out of this you will also uncover a whole lot of other things within the review process. New projects, you know, people will have a better understanding of what you do and you can go back in at an earlier stage. You know, you know they'll know to come to you, uh, whether it be a new installation process or new product ideas. Uh, what you want to be in a position is the first thing they think of is, well, let's get this simulated. Often is the case, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with this, you'll be asked to come in you know, when things aren't going right, when all the decisions have been made and you've got to go in there and build a model to work out why it's not working. Much better to get involved in an earlier process, uh, an early stage of the process. And this is where this customer review process can very much help, uh, you know, you getting involved in the earlier stage of the process. And it's all, as I mentioned before, it's all about customer focus. So looking at the sort of first three steps, uh, that's very much looking at, at the, the customer. And as I mentioned in the review, I think most of the customers re reviewed uh, themselves reasonably well on a, in, the, uh, in the poll that we did of, of how customer focused they were. But there's a few other techniques to throw into the mix that will help you become even more focused on your customer. We move on to one of the other areas now, management awareness. Now, if I have a look at this uh, and... I guess what we're thinking about here is, you know, does your management or your customer uh, really understand, you know, what simulation is, what the benefits are, um, and how can we, how can you guys, how can we as sort of modelers help our organization to understand better what simulation can do for them? And that's what management awareness is all about. And we've worked with many of our uh, customers 
to pull together, you know, and supported them in creating, you know, management awareness seminars and uh, and presentations to help with this internally within the organisation. But you know, just to give you a flavour of a few of the sorts of slides that we've put together here that that, uh, uh, that that might be of interest to you, something I often put up. This was put up for a, an automotive manufacturer out of interest. And, you know, um, I put this slide up or suggested a, a customer put this slide up just to get the management to sit up and take notice. Do you realise how many of our competition within the automotive sector are actually using simulation to help them make decisions? Uh, and you can see a flavour there around the world of that. So, so something I often try and provoke within management is, you know, are you aware of how widely used this is? Uh, another similar slide that you may well have seen us putting up is um, a typical customer slide. All these organizations are using simulation. There must be a reason for it. You know, you know, and, and what we're trying to do here is get your management, get your senior management to understand that this isn't you know, a technical tool that's used in some corner of, uh, uh, of their organization that comes out every once in a while. This is a, a, an approach, a technique that has been used successfully you know, across a range of different organizations. And as we come on to the third se uh, step, if you like, the promoting your value internally, you can start to promote how it's being used within your own organization uh, as well. I'll come back to that, but that, that gives you a flavor of the sorts of slides that we will use in this particular um, area of, of making management more aware. This is a objectives from one such um, presentation that we did with an organization um, looking at uh, uh, raising management awareness. Uh, typical objectives, you know, explain what simulation is, show the value, show how it works with other things, um, uh, when it should be used, when it shouldn't be used, and some examples of it in use. Uh, and this is typically, you know, slides that you guys can use to help promote the use of simulation within your organization. Another agenda that we used with another, that we, I supplied to another organization, you know, similar but a longer full days session this was as opposed to a short session, looking at promoting uh, the value of simulation within your management um, to, to sort of help the use, drive the use more widely within the organization. So some thoughts there, you know, it's a challenge, you know, management typically have a number of things on the mind, but if you can start to use some of these techniques, it will help raise the profile of simulation within your, um, within your organization. The third area, telling our value story, and that might be a strange way of putting it, um, but this to me is one of the most important aspects, you know, of being sort of an internal simulation group, uh, an internal consultancy within your organization is to tell your story, to tell the value that you guys are promoting through the rest of your organization. It builds very much on the other two steps, uh, certainly on the management awareness. And it's all about communicating what you've done throughout the business, uh, educating those of its benefits, increasing awareness, um, identifying new areas where simulation can help, uh, and also uh, enhancing your own rep reputation, sort of internally and, and externally through, good, through the results of the projects that you've done. Uh, and there's all sorts of different ways that we've done this uh, within organizations uh, by working with them to create um, website case studies, which can be used on their intranet, uh, internal magazine or newspaper, videos that can be used on the internet or an intranet as, as well. Case studies can typically take a, a simple sort of format. There's, there's one that we worked with an organization to produce uh, for, for them. And obviously we get the benefit uh, uh, that organizations will often uh, let us use that information uh, as well. Uh, other things that, we can, that can be used, um, let's have a look at this. This is something we often put together. Let me put the slide up uh, so that you can see it. One page slide, which you'll put up at the end of a project. So if you've done a number of projects in your organization, it wouldn't take much to sort of pull together a slide for each project, identifying, you know, what you've done, the scope, the benefits uh, of the project and 
embed a simple video of, of the model. And that's often enough, you know, for sim as you as you work up a catalogue of projects, uh, you know, two, three, four, five, a slide on each is often enough to communicate the value of your organization, uh, of your of using simulation throughout your organization. So important part of the process. So it's all very interlinked, these three topics are very much interlinked, you know, customer focus, yes, the reviews drive out information that we can use to help us make management more aware of what's going on in the organization and the value of simulation and the value of you guys uh, as a team of modeling experts within your organization. And this and telling the value story again is all about, you know, building up this uh, information around uh, you know the use of simulation within your organization so three very quick techniques uh, that we, we can use help is available you know it's not as if you've got to do this all on your own there's all sorts of tools things available that can help you on the journey you know we've talked about some of the technical things in the past you know, and there'll be more following this webinar on you know technical side of things. You know, uh, support desk, witness help, and all those sorts of things, uh, and the technical mentoring, consulting, and so on. But also, lots of other things that you can use within your organisation to, um, uh, to 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 help sort of build your reputation, your stature within your organisation. Uh, so, key message there is. Come and talk to us. We want to help you succeed. It's in our interest for you guys to succeed. So we want to help you in whatever way we can to drive the use of simulation within your organization. So if I start to sort of pull things to a close as we're coming towards the end of our organ of our uh, uh, 30 minutes. Um, first of all, this Taking simulation beyond modeling is much more about taking, if you like, uh, you're outside the pure technical model building side of your role. Um, the previous webinars I mentioned looked at experimentation and project management. Um, this has much more use, you know, it's almost a promotional advertising awareness education within your organization. Uh, to, to Im Im improve the use of simulation throughout your organization. I've got a couple of questions here which have come in during the course of the webinar. Um, somebody's asked me, you know, can you let me know which companies in my industry are using Witness? Um, by all means, look at our website, but at the end of this, I'll put my email address, and if you email me directly, I can... Uh, I can re respond back with the sorts of organizations uh, within, within your industry that are using uh, simulation uh, uh, and perhaps within other industries, but doing similar things. Um, people asking me about what does a project case study entail and how do you use it? It's a variety of different things. It can be a written piece, a presentation at a user event. It can be a video, uh, all of which can be passed around your organization, placed on your intranet, blogs, uh, internal, external publications, you know, all sorts, you know, and, you know, again, if it's something you're interested in doing, look at my email at the end uh, and drop me an email and I'll have a chat to you and we'll, we'll work out what's best uh, to, to help you guys pull together things that will help promote your value within the organization. As I bring this to a close then, um, I'll put my email address up while I just uh, just pull together a few closing things. This this webinar is the last in the series of three on Beyond Modeling. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about any of these topics or would like to, us to do one in a particular area, then, then again, please let me know. Uh, this is the last of the year, but we are lining up a series of new webinars for the new year. Uh, ranging around a number of topics. Some of the things we've been asked for is Excel databases and reading data into Witness. Uh, there's stuff about 3D modeling in Witness. Uh, Witness 14 will be coming along in the new year, of course, as well. All of those you know, are in the mix uh, yeah, for, for looking at future webinars. Um, others, whatever you come up with, by all means, contact me and let me know. These The, the series of 
webinars that we've been running will appear on our website in the new year. So if you want to revisit the content of any of these, uh, we'll let you know when, when that's up there. Uh, all that remains for me to do is to thank you all for attending and thank you for listening. Uh, I trust you found some interesting information, some thought-provoking information, but please do get in touch. We're only too keen to help you guys succeed within your organisation. And if there's anything we can do, don't sit there, shout up, and we'll do whatever we can to help. Thank you all and goodbye.